Welcome to the Common Man Football Show. My name is James Coburn, and today's episode, we're talking about the Buffalo Bills 2018 NFL Draft Class based on analytics. And in this video, uh, we're going to look at this draft class based on production and athleticism analytics, uh, specifically on how past players performed in terms of uh, uh, the draft class to see if they have all pro potential, pro bowl potential, or starter potential based on the traits that all pro, pro bowl, and starter players typically had on paper. And if you're new to the channel, new to the work that I do, all terms and definitions will be in the description. So starting with the first pick of the draft, of course, we have Josh Allen, quarterback out of Wyoming. I've done a lot of videos on Josh Allen, so I don't want to get too deep into things all over again. Uh, but the basics are simply this. When it comes to his high school and his FPS production data, there's never been a long-term starting quarterback to have as low of a high school production score as Josh Allen since the 2007 NFL Draft class. And there's only been a handful of long-term starters to have as low of an FBS score as he's had since the 1958 NFL Draft uh, class. Uh, the quarterbacks that are that low are guys like Jake DeLome, Josh McCowan, and that's about it. Only about two quarterbacks have really had a chance to become successful with as low of a FBS production score as Josh Allen. Um, and both those guys were in many ways project quarterbacks coming out. Uh, but the career data kind of makes things a little bit worse. Only had a 20.11 career FBS score, which uh, when you look at the all-pro career threshold, meaning that there's never been a multiple all-pro quarterback to have less than a 77.32 career score. Josh Allen has a 20.11. Uh, the Pro Bowl career threshold is 64.6. Josh Allen again has 20.11, and the starter career threshold is about 17.26, and Josh Allen has about 20.11, and the 17.26 score is with Jake DeLome. Uh, so again, the only quarterback who has scored as low as Josh Allen when it comes to his production data at the FPS level is Jake DeLome. So that is basically the upside that Josh Allen has in many ways. Uh, and then of course you look at the averages at the position, this just puts things into more perspective. The average all-pro score is about 87.77. The average Pro Bowl score is about 72.26. And the average starter score, not even a Pro Bowl or all-pro, but just a starter, is about 70.76. Uh, Josh Allen, again, 20.11. So not that impressive. Um, when it comes to Josh Allen, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. We'll see what happens after this point. But uh, I, he, he's one of the worst testing quarterbacks to come out. Um in terms of a first round quarterback specifically, he's just one of the worst quarterbacks to come out in that time span. I think in many ways the data says that he's a project quarterback, a quarterback that's gonna take some time, two years, three years, maybe more years of development before he becomes a long-term starter. And even at that, what are you getting at the end of the rainbow? Jake DeLome, Josh McCowan. So again, um, I'm not saying that Josh Allen has 0% chance of becoming a successful NFL quarterback. It's just that his upside is not that high uh, when you look at past quarterbacks because of how much development you're going to have to do just to get them to the baseline of most NFL quarterbacks. Then of course you get to uh, Tremaine Edmonds, linebacker out of Virginia Tech. Uh, when you look at his production data, 93.57 in terms of solo tackle data. Pretty strong production profile here when you look at all pro and pro bowl potential. Has a very good shot of hitting those marks from a production standpoint. But when you get to his athleticism trait, 78.32 in terms of explosiveness, 95.43 in terms of speed. Uh, doesn't quite have all pro potential explosive lower body strength, but does have at least a very good speed score and a Pro Bowl level explosiveness. So I think in many ways, Tremaine Edmonds has a very good shot to be a Pro Bowl linebacker uh, or better, um, and, and definitely a long-term starter based on his production, based on his athleticism traits. And of course, we get to Harrison Phillips, defensive tackle out of Stanford. Uh, when you look at his athleticism traits, 76.98 in terms of explosiveness, 36.13 in terms of speed, and 88.30 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, in many ways, doesn't quite have the speed score of a Pro Bowl defensive tackle, but definitely pretty darn close. Uh, and I think in many ways, when you look at his overall profile, just really impressive in terms of explosiveness and flexibility. So he is someone who does have some really intriguing um, athleticism traits. And on top of that, has very good production traits as well. Uh, 95.43 in terms of solo tackle data, 89.59 in terms of sack data, and 95.82 in terms of tackle for loss data. Pretty much hits every single bottom and threshold in terms of um, 
all pro potential, pro bowl potential, and starter potential in terms of his production data. And when you look at the averages at the position, it's well above what most of the averages are in terms of all pro nose tackles, pro bowl nose tackles, and starter nose tackles. So very, very solid profile for Harrison Phillips when you look at it from a uh, production standpoint. Then, of course, you get to Teron Johnson, cornerback out of Weber State. Uh, when you look at his production data, and this is at lower level competition, but this is just his production data at that level, 90.90 uh, in terms of solo tackle data and 20.31 in terms of pass flexion data. Um, very good solo tackle data, but the pass flexion data is the only major question mark here. And athleticism-wise, 32.84 in terms of explosiveness, 57.35 in terms of speed, and 47.64 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, does not quite have all pro potential or pro bowl potential based on his athleticism testing, but definitely has a, a chance to become a long-term starter. Um, I, I think in many ways, he does have that sort of slim chance, uh, but when you look at the averages, the starter average, the pro bowl average, and all pro average, he does leave a lot to be desired. Uh, we'll see what happens with him, but I think the ultimate upside for Teron Johnson is a starter, but most likely based on his data, just looking at it, Collectively, I think you're looking at more of a backup slash uh, rotational guy. Then, of course, you get to Sharon Neal, uh, defensive back out of Jacksonville State. Uh, when you look at his production data, 52.16 in terms of solo tackle data, 70.20 in terms of pass selection data. Similar situation, this was at a lower level division, so kind of take some of this data with a grain of salt. Um, but, you know, reasonably decent pass selection data, but the solo tackle data is a little concerning. Uh, and, but athleticism-wise, does have some impressive athleticism, athleticism traits. 97.30 uh, in terms of explosiveness, 62.19 in terms of speed, and 65.13 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, in many ways, you're looking at a, a all, close to uh, Pro Bowl potential uh, cornerback slash defensive back prospect when you look at it with very impressive explosiveness for his size. So um, I think that's basically what you're looking at here is a guy that has a good chance to become a long-term starter to uh, Pro Bowl player uh, when you just look at him from an athleticism standpoint. Uh, and then, of course, you get to Wyatt Ta uh, Teller, offensive guard out of Virginia Tech. Uh, looking at his athleticism traits, 77.90 in terms of explosiveness, 39.08 in terms of speed, and 66.62 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, doesn't quite have the flexibility of an all-pro slash Pro Bowl guard, uh, but definitely is pretty close. Uh, and when you look at the averages of the position, um, again, this kind of shows for the shows that he looks more like a long-term starter than he does a all-pro and Pro Bowl player, but still pretty intriguing athleticism traits to say the least when it comes to Wyatt Taylor, uh, Teller. Um, so I think there's a very good shot that he becomes a long-term um, starter at the position because of his explosiveness and because of his balance traits. Then, of course, we get to Ray Ray McLeod, wide receiver out of Clemson. Uh, when you look at his production data, 28.44 in terms of passing yards, mark share production. Doesn't hit the five-time All-Pro, three-time All-Pro, three-time Pro Bowl, or long-term starter threshold uh, since the 1969 NFL Draft class. Uh, looking at the averages at the position, it kind of makes his production look worse. And when you look at his athleticism traits, 36.71 in terms of explosiveness, 51.86 in terms of speed, and 57.29 in terms of flexibility for his size. Uh, when it comes to the wide receiver position, every single, at least the vast majority of multiple All-Pro and Pro Bowl wide receivers since 1999 had at least a 54 or higher athleticism trait. Raven McLeod has one in flexibility testing, but when you look at his production data and you look at how poor of an athlete he is in general, I think it's very unlikely that he becomes a long-term starter because of just that combination of really poor production and kind of eh athleticism traits. And then, of course, we get to Austin Prohl, wide receiver out of North Carolina. Uh, production very similar to Ray Ray McLeod, 26.55. Similar situation here. Averages doesn't make it look much better. And when you get to athleticism traits, has a much better flexibility score than, uh, than Ray Ray McLeod of 73.56. So he does have a much, impre much more impressive athleticism trait um, compared to Ray Ray McLeod. But they're both kind of in the same boat from a... Uh, production standpoint. Just very poor production. Athleticism in terms of explosiveness and speed is not that great. We'll see what happens, but both of these picks just don't look that impressive uh, overall. So when you look at the Buffalo Bills draft class, uh, bottom line is I do think there are some successful players from this draft class. I think uh, Edmonds, uh, Harrison Phillips, Sierra Neal, White Teller, those are probably the, the, the four picks in general that I think have a very good shot to become long-term successful NFL players. Uh, but when it comes to Josh Allen, 
uh, Teron Johnson, Raven McLeod, and Austin Prohl. I think it's very unlikely that those players go on to become consistent long-term starters or better because of their production data coming out. I'm always welcome to have the data prove me wrong, <clears throat> but just remember that don't kill the messenger. Um, just because I'm reporting to you what the data says doesn't mean that I'm just this evil schemer that's trying to hate on prospects. I'm really not. I think every prospect has a chance to uh, to, to outperform um, what the data says about them as a player. But I do think that Josh Allen's data in general um, speaks louder than words can um, in many ways. So, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, I just don't think it's going to work out that well because of the just the combination of issues with him. Um, we'll see what happens ultimately, but from the onset, it just looks kind of like a disaster waiting to happen. And of course, uh, my name is James Coburn. Uh, you can find my other work at draftcoburn.wordpress.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Gemetrics. And if you like this content and you want more content like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Or share this video as well with anybody that you know. Hit that notification button so that you're always reminded when another video of mine drops. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.